Hello, I'm Richard Ashworth. Sometimes people ask me for a scientific explanation of feng shui, which is a reasonable question, I guess. And what I tend to say is something like, if you grow tomatoes and you plant them in January, don't expect great salads. Even worse if you plant them on a north-facing wall. Now, feng shui has grown out of the observations of a series of Chinese geniuses out of millennia, over millennia, they didn't make these ideas up just to confuse Europeans. What they saw was something that was so. Now, when you got up this morning, you didn't go, gosh, today feels like the 27th. I doubt that you did because it doesn't feel like anything. The 27th of the month is just a convention to make sure that I'm here when the camera's here, not tomorrow when the camera are and I'm on holiday. That's what calendars are for. Feng shui is based in an observation of a real cycle of time. Because it may be that you woke up and you said, this feels like Monday. Now there's a real cycle which is related to the seven, seven visible planets. It may be that you woke up and said, this feels like autumn, because you know that. It may be that you woke up and you said, this feels a little bit bloody late because it was 11, but you can tell. And feng shui is based on this closeness to the earth, an awareness, a natural awareness of time and space. Now, let me give you a little exercise that you can do so that you can, we can illustrate this and also so that you can see what I do when I'm doing feng shui very, very simplistically. So find yourself a space, whether it's a room or a house or an office or a town or a nation, find the middle of it. How do you find the middle? You draw a line across the corners, corner to corner, and it's, in, it's where they meet. Don't complicate it, it's really that simple. You may find that that puts you in a strange place in relation to the building, but that actually would tell me something about the building. But that's what you do. Position yourself so that you're facing south. Now, if you don't know where south is, it's where most of the light is. If you don't have a window in that direction, it may be hard to do. You'll need a compass anyway to get it right. So I want you to be sitting down so you're facing south. Now, south is towards the horse down there, where the sun is at its highest. South represents the noon, because that's when the sun is at its highest. South represents the summer solstice, because again, it's when the sun is at its highest. The, these connections were arrived at by observing that the dawn happens over here, just behind the east, by my left hand, where the tiger sits. The tiger's, quality is, tiger's qualities, vision, swift and sudden movement. That's what a tiger's like. And the tiger is the moment of dawn, when northeast just behind my left hand, turns it to east. And we have light movement activity. This is called wood. Wood means movement. By extension, it means aspiration. It means getting things done. It means getting results. It, mean, it means getting out of jams, log jams, if you like. If you want more achievement, you want things to move, then what you do is to work here with the wood. So we have the tiger here, just behind the east. We have the rabbit due east, which is yin wood. The difference between yin wood and yang wood, they're both aspirational, they both spread out. But yang wood is going like that, it is phallic, it's like a tree trunk. It's like the trees in the rainforest fighting for the light. Further round is the rabbit, which is yin wood. Yin wood is like grass or moss or mushrooms. It will grow anywhere. If you want to get rid of a tree, which is yang wood. Yang is unsubtle, it is essentially masculine. You just get a chainsaw, bang, done with. If you want to get rid of grass, you take a chainsaw to it, all you get is muddy. Yin is more subtle. So we have these ideas of yin and yang, but they have this idea of wood. Coming around here, tiger, rabbit, we have the dragon, which is the end of the wood time. So the time of the tiger is between three and five in the morning, that's dawn, it's also, the month of February, starting around the 4th, hence the Chinese New Year. It's when there are lambs being born, when there are buds on the trees, when the days are getting longer, there is more light, there is movement. So we have tiger, rabbit, dragon. Then we're coming into fire. Over here, the, next, the, first, the first animal of fire is the snake. And the snake is yin fire, which is relatively fragile, but it is warmer and more busy. So pretty you pretty, it's pretty certain that if you're putting in a working day sometime between 9 and 11 in the morning, which is when the snake is there, you've got started. And we then come around to the horse, which is noon. So this quality of fire is about visibility, being out in the world, getting stuff done. The odds are you're going to be more out in the world, actually outside in the summer, the time of the horse. The horse's month is June. The snake's month is May. So we're moving around the calendar. The horse's time is, is noon. 
so we're also, also moving around the clock. So by extension, this quality of light is about fame, it's about visibility, it's about promotion, it's about imagination, it's about enlightenment. And then we come around to the sheep, which is the end of the fire, which is like siesta time, the sort of rest after the extreme, extreme of fire, coming into the southwest. Southwest is reckoned to be about relationship and about the mother and so on. Also, if you want more of these qualities, you work here. Broadly, there is more to it. Sometimes it isn't a good time to, it, to, to do these. Sometimes it's not a good time to activate particular areas. But the quality of relationship broadly sits here. And the quality of fame broadly sits here. So we come around the southwest to the monkey, who is metal. Now metal, that is yang metal, it is tricky. In its extreme, it is aggressive. It's about accuracy. So yang metal is about authority. In its extreme, it's about war. So the dates of wars tend to be monkey years and monkey months. Revolutions particularly, 1789, 1776, 1848, and so on. 1956, 1968, year of the barricades, monkey years. So metal is about this quality. Metal is also about education, about precision, getting things right. It's about counting things up. And the time of the monkey is the late afternoon. So it's when schools close, it's when banks close. It's when traditionally, in, in, in the, the traditional Chinese family, the father came home and made sure the kids had done their homework and taught them whatever they needed to know from Confucius. Coming around, this is still southwest, we come to the rooster in the west, which is yin metal. Yin metal is still about accuracy and precision, but more about proportion. So it's about art and jewelry and the skin and those sorts of things. You want more of these qualities, you stimulate this area, we get more metal. How do you get more metal? You put more metal there. Coming round, round from there, we come to the water area. Water is about communication. Water is both silent and noisy. This is this Chinese idea of yin and yang. So this quality of communication is both being stum and saying a great deal. So we come to, uh, from the rooster, we come to the dog, which is like a watershed between this area of aggression and uh, activity and the stiller time of the night. It's the time of autumn, the time of the harvest festival with the dog. And then we come round to the pig, which is yin water. So water, as I said, is about communication. The pig is about not communicating enough broadly. The rat is about communicating too much broadly. But the... The rat is it covers the hour. The rat covers the double hour around midnight. So the rat stands for midnight. The pig for the couple of hours before that, and the dog for the couple of hours before that. But here we are, round at midnight, in winter, in the cold, and in the dark. So it stands to reason that in December or dead of night, it is colder and darker than it is in June and and in noon. So broadly at noon. So broadly. If I'm working with you, what I'm doing is either building up aspiration, building up visibility, building up precision, or building up communication. There's more to it, but essentially that's what I'm doing, building it up or reducing it. And this is where the qualities are. If you were simply to work with those things in those areas, you will tend to see changes in those things over time.